Starting up, word knowledge. So if this is your first word knowledge session with me, make sure you take a quick screenshot of this after I get my big old head out of the way. So make sure you take a screenshot here. Uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to be going over sentence questions today. Now, before we get into that, we do want to make sure we understand the types of words that we're going to experience on the word knowledge. So first and foremost, the word knowledge is not just a bunch of random words memorized. It is not. The word knowledge is essentially a huge list of common words that appear in everyday culture. Now, again, common does not mean that you should automatically know what the word means. Common means that it appears in everyday culture. So there can be words that you may recognize but don't know how to define. Yeah, those are going to be those common words. And you want to practice every single day, little by little, to make sure that not only do you memorize these words, but you actually understand them, how to use them in a sentence, how to understand and identify a synonym or a word that means the same thing. That's typically where you want to go with the word knowledge, because the majority of the words that you'll see on the test are going to be in that group of common words. And yes, common words can include words with prefixes, suffixes, and root words therein. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you want to focus your attention on common words. And so for those of us that are in the Word Knowledge Bootcamp, hey, make sure you're spending that you know, 15 minutes every single day at the least, at the least, if you're in the All Access Pass. Also, even if you're not and you're just in the group tutoring pass, you can also download the Vocabulary Builder app by Magoosh right here in green. It's a free app, plenty of words to go with. Um, they have different levels in terms of the SAT, GRE. They even have groups of words for English learners. So whether or not you speak English fluently, it's a great way to get yourself ready to go and get your feet wet because it's multiple choice, just like the test. And it also gives you the definition of the word and the sentence included, plus how to pronounce the word which makes it a lot easier to really add that word into your vocabulary. That's what you want to do there. So with that said, my party people, I got to have y'all remind me really quick. And before I begin, I got one more thing to say. But remind me again, how much time do you get per question for the word knowledge? Go ahead and type it into the chat box. How much time do we get per question again on the word knowledge? <laughs> we always get confused here, right? Yeah, we get about 30 seconds per question on the word knowledge. Just about 30 seconds per question. About 30 seconds per question. And so what we're going to do here today is we're going to time ourselves in that exact same way. Now, again, today we're going to be doing sentence questions for the word knowledge. So let's go over some general strategies. And we're going to be going over these strategies through and through. But make sure to use the context clues to try to figure out what the word means if you're drawing a blank. A great way to do that is to read around the word. So everybody, let's go ahead and just do a little exercise. So let's go ahead and say this. Let's try to define this word. I'm not even going to say the word, but I know that you'll be able to define it. So I really wanted the stuffed teddy bear for Christmas. And when I found out that my sister got it for me, I was really blank. Everybody, fill in the sentence, fill in that word right there. What word do you think belongs in that blank? So I really wanted that teddy bear for Christmas. And when my little sister got it for me, I was really blank, ecstatic, excited. Charles, I know you're trying to joke around. Come on, man. So happy, happy, elated, excited, happy. And there it is, right? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to be able to read around words. And so that's the idea there. Even if you don't know what the word means, even if you don't know how to pronounce it, doesn't quite matter. It doesn't quite give you a 0% chance. There are strategies that you can use. So that's what I wanted to say there. So with that said, oh, no, I thought you were just messing around, man, because you're the first to answer there. <laughs> All right. So with that said, before we begin, I do want to give a special shout out. So I know you guys have uh, been experiencing these questions for forever now, and you haven't been able to exactly uh, see the person, the, you know, the genius behind making all these questions for word knowledge and paragraph comprehension. So I do want to give a special shout out to Arshina. So Arshina is right there on the screen now. She is the person who has been working her butt off to make these questions for y'all. So Arshina, I'll go ahead and make you a co-host as well. That way you can use your mic. But I would love for Arshina to just give a quick hello to you guys before we get started. Hey guys, yeah, I'm Sheena uh, or Arshina. And yeah, I make the questions. I really enjoy making questions. And I'm sorry if they're like really hard, but just trying to help you guys pass the math. <laughs> Yeah, so you have definitely caused some tears. Only a couple. 
only a couple, but um, I think that everybody here appreciates you for it because even the hard questions we can always learn from and we absolutely appreciate you for it. And surprise to everybody, Arshina potentially will be uh, coming in to start team teaching some classes pretty soon. So I want you guys to get excited for it because she is actually a very capable instructor. And honestly, she's made tremendous milestones and helped us in the company just achieve new heights. And so I'm really excited to invite her to teach because I know that she's qualified, she's able, and I know that you guys will be excited for her. So Arshina, thanks. Appreciate you. And she'll be in the session today for the majority of it. Um, and so, hey. If you want to go ahead and, you know, type some hints in the chat box for some folks, I won't mind either. Okay. I got you guys. Perfect. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and get the party started. Let me go ahead and remove that spotlight. That way they can see the questions. Booyah. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this timer ready to go. We got 30 seconds per question here. Again, these are sentence questions. Three, two, one. Let's say it's the ASVAB. Yeah, and as a reminder, just type ready when you're ready in the chat box. Just type ready when you're ready. And that's it right there. Looking at our final three, two, and one. Let's go. I've been teaching for over 10 years, and I got a master's degree in math education, which is my specialty, but I also teach English and general science as well. At the end of the day, I want to make sure that you can stress less and not have to worry about having anxieties about the test, being able to actually not blank out and feel confident about what you're doing. And at the end of the day, are you able to study consistently and know that you are growing? That's really what matters to me the most at the end of the day. So that's why my program is here for you to help you succeed. It has everything you need, the classes, all the recordings, all the practice you'll need, and the ability to text me directly. So you have your coach with you, mentoring you every step of the way until you pass. I'm serious about your success. So go ahead and click the link in the description of this video or somewhere over here. That way you can watch how it works, see all the details, and sign up and start raising your score right away. If you have any questions, my phone number is 567-698-8867. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Text me and ask me about the program or click the link and watch how it works. Let's get this done. Let's raise your score and get you that job you deserve. Let's get to it. All righty. So, all right, let's see so far. And again, don't wait, everybody. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait to see what everybody else is putting. You know, we don't do that here. Again, leave your ego at the door. We are not here to just look like we're doing things right. We are here to learn how to be right and repeat that success. So again, leave your ego at the door. Put your first guess or first answer there. Perfect. There we go. Oh, I love that. Over 60 answers already. There we go. So let's check it out, my party people. Eating badly will negate your efforts to lose weight. Eating badly will blank your efforts to lose weight. So again, remember, if you don't even know what the word means, you can read around the word. So eating badly will blank your efforts to lose weight. Negate most nearly means what? Invalidate, hound, bypass, or ordain. So the answer here, my party people, why are you talking about me in this sentence? And the J, I'm actually talking about me. So here we go. The answer is A, invalidate, invalidate. Because when we think about it, everybody, when we are talking about eating poorly and someone's efforts to lose weight, I think we can agree that those are contradictory. Those contradict each other. And what I mean by contradict is that they go against each other. Eating badly and losing weight, those are things that will go against each other or negate each other. And the word invalidate, I think I can, I think a lot of us can agree that we have seen that word before. Typically though, typically though, I think we can agree that we've seen the word invalidate in the context of taking an exam, where we may have seen it like, oh, that person cheated, so their test scores were invalidated. Has anybody ever heard that phrase before? Test scores being invalidated, yes or no? Right. I think we all have. Right. I think for the majority of us. Yeah, the majority of us have. And so that's why invalidate is the answer. So with that said, we do need to make sure that we understand the definition of negate. Use it in a sentence right here. 
And then also look at the other words just to make sure that we're not crazy, right? So let's get to it. So the definition of negate, nullify or to make ineffective. And so in this case, that's perfect, right? Eating badly will make ineffective your efforts to lose weight. And that is true. You can go to the gym and sleep right. And you can do all the things right. But if you're having a Big Mac every evening, I mean, it's going to be a little harder, right? It's going to be a little harder. And so let's take a look at the next word here, or actually the sentence, then the words. So here, do not fill this form out more than once because it will negate all duplicates. So basically, follow the directions unless you want this to be just. So let's look at the answer choices here. B, hound. Everybody, to your knowledge, what does hound mean? Quick, quick, quick. What does hound sound like it means to you? Like when you're hounding somebody, what does that sound like? Yeah, harassing. That's a good one. That's a good one. Harp on somebody. Bothering somebody. Hounding them. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Pest. Another great word to use. So you guys know a lot of synonyms, and I love seeing that. Great stuff. Now let's take a look at B over here. With B... Let's go ahead and talk about, or excuse me, C, bypass. What does bypass mean? This is a, a slightly more complicated word, but what does bypass mean? Nice to go around. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Bypass means to go around something or an object or an obstacle. So for example, you can say, hey, uh, I really, really didn't like the way that my, uh, my boss didn't approve my vacation time. So I bypassed her authority and went to the company owner, right? And so if you've ever had the luxury of doing that, you have a great job if you can see the owner of the company, but there it is. So let's talk about ordain, which might be the most complicated word for some people. What does ordain mean, everybody? Oh, ministering a wedding is a great example. Great example, Kaylee. Anybody else? That, that's a good one. Ministering a wedding. To a point, right? To a point. Yeah. So basically the definition of ordain is to essentially like do something officially. So order something officially. And typically that is reserved for the religious text. Yeah, for sure. But ordain basically means to make official. All right. By a decree or whatever it is to give authorization. And the J perfectly said, perfectly said. And so there it is, my party people. So let's just recap really quick what we just did. Notice how we didn't just, oh, I got the answer right or wrong. Let's move on. Guys, we can do more with less. Notice how in every word or every question that we deal with, we have one, two, three, four, five words in every question. Do your job here and write down all five words and make sure you at least have a basic sense of understanding of those words. And then after class, Go ahead and improve your understanding. Maybe add them to your question bank that you have a flashcard. Or if you're in the Word Knowledge Bootcamp, go in there, study them. These are the sentence questions. You can find them again. You're good. So I want to make sure you understand how to do this. Yes or no, does that make sense? Make the most out of every question by looking at every answer as well. Hey, right on. Right on, right on. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and get to the next one here. Three, two, one. And one. Let's go. Let's speed it up now. Go. Four, three, two, one. Everybody answer right now. Don't wait for everybody else. Don't wait for everybody else. Hey, Vlad, you're good. Don't wait for everybody else. Let's go. Let's go. Sean, you're good too. Go ahead. Answer it, answer it, answer it, answer it, answer it. Do not wait. Do not wait. Again, we're not here to try to piggyback off of other people's answers. We are here to see if we got what it takes right now. And if we don't, let's learn, right? So let's see it here. The couple's quarrel was silenced with a gunshot. Okay, this seems like a pretty serious passage. Here. So the, the couple's quarrel was silenced with a gunshot. So when we think about, okay, the couple's blank was silenced with a gunshot. 
So apparently, whatever they were doing, there was noise being made, right? Because obviously, for something to be silenced, well, something needed to be making noise. Correct or incorrect there? What do you guys think? For something to be silenced, I think it's fair to say that it would have had to be making noise, right? And so that's what I'm talking about with context clues, right? That's what I'm talking about with context clues. And so when you think about something that can make noise, especially between couples, which one of these words sounds like it would really fit in? Ascent or a rising up, animosity or like anger towards somebody or hatred towards somebody, altercation or an argument or a, you know, a, a, a loud debate, authorization, signing off on something. Which one of these things sounds like it would fit in the sentence the best? So the majority of us are saying altercation, and that is correct. It is going to be altercation. A close second, I will agree with you. A close second is absolutely animosity, but not quite. Animosity and altercation are two different things. And let me explain how. So first off, let's talk about altercation or quarrel. A quarrel is a loud expression of deferring opinions. An altercation, a debate, right? An argument. Those all mean the same thing there. Now, if you're sitting here saying animosity should be the answer, let me tell you why not. It's because animosity is a feeling, not an action. One more time. Animosity is a feeling, not an action. So I could have, let's go ahead and say, I could have animosity toward Ronald because Ronald never shows up to class. Like he never does. So I have some animosity or feelings of disdain for Ronald. And obviously I'm joking. Ronald, he comes to every class. Shout out Ronald, your boss. But yeah. I could say that, pretending that I hate Ronald, I have animosity towards Ronald. All that means is I have feelings of, of dislike or feelings of anger toward Ronald. That doesn't mean I'm being loud about it. That doesn't mean I'm arguing with him. He may not even know that uh, I have animosity toward him. I mean, if you're really passive, you'll never know. But you see what I'm saying there. Animosity is a feeling. An altercation is an act, an action. So something taking place. All right. And so with that said, I'm um, going through the, the sentence here. Vicky did not want to have a quarrel with Ricky in the town square, so she left. She didn't want to have a, a quarrel, a, large, a loud argument, so I'm out of here. Not really worth it to me. Looking at the other definitions of these words, starting from the bottom here, we have authorization. So authorization is, again, a signal of approval. So authorization, meaning we are signing off on something. And so then when we think about assent, if you want to have the Google definition of it, so assent is also the expression of approval or agreement. So authorization and assent are actually the same exact thing. They're actually the same exact thing. That's actually my fault for reading assent with a C, not the double S, because with a C, it would have been rising up. That's on me. But it, an A double S E N T means the authorization or the expression of approval. So. Uh, I have noticed on every question on the ASVAB, two never make sense and the other two are tricky. Hey, David, good eye. That's typically how they're going to do it. So, for example, oh, and this is actually going to be funny. So, has anybody here ever been to a word knowledge class with me and noticed that the, the word from the sentence, when you look at the answer choices, there's a word that sounds exactly like it should fit in, but there's one minor thing about it that just makes it completely wrong. Yes, 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 C, 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 yes, yes, exactly. It's going to happen. And that's why it's so important to actually know these words. So I'll take a question from Elias before we move forward here. So Elias, what's up, boss? You can go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. So like, you know, on ASBEB, so they like, so when they come to rewrite the word, how do you, um, how do you, because it sounds the same but they have different meanings. You, you get me? Yeah, okay. That's a good question. So yeah, absolutely. There are words out there that are spelled one way, but have two different meanings depending on how you use them. So the one thing that you can trust about the word knowledge on the ASVAB is that they're not going to be like outright like evil with it. They're not going to do that. Um, they're not going to have two correct answers. So you can bet that you can use that to your advantage, knowing that there is only one correct answer. Now, if the meaning of the word that you're looking at fits the description of what you're looking at with the question, 
That's the answer. Absolutely. If it fits, it works. But what they will not do, they won't do this in, in the following way. Like they're not going to put, oh, angry most nearly means, and then they'll put mad and they'll put agitated. You know, they won't do that at all either. Um, another way, I'm trying to think of a word that has a double meaning right now. And it's, there's like a million of them. I can't think of it, but just trust that they won't do it. They won't. If that word has a double meaning and one of the meanings fits exactly in there, that's the answer. Full stop. Cool, cool. cool. So, so I like I always had trouble with the word knowledge, like in high school. Like my English is the baddest one. So I'm trying to learn how to do this. So I'm going to keep going. Yeah, right on, man. It just takes time. Keep practicing, man. Yes, sir. All right, let's get a gang. So up next, we're going to have our next question. Three, two, one. Let's go. And two, one, time. Let's go, let's go, let's go again. Don't wait, don't wait. Put your answer in, hit enter. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. Let's try this here. So this is a question where we may have some, uh, we may have a root word in here that we can absolutely use. So the only thing that stopped us from dating is the amount of conceit you carry with you. Now, everybody, what does uh conceit sound like it could turn into you know from a root word to like a, another word what what does conceit sound like it could be turned into or it's short for conceited conceited right conceited conceit conceited sound very similar and that is a fact yes that that will work out so what does conceited mean like if someone is conceited what does that mean Prideful, self-absorbed, cocky, full of themselves, right? And so what answer choice do you guys believe might fit the bill here? What answer choice do you believe might fit the bill? Hmm. Yeah, narcissism. That is correct. Booyah, right there. So let's check it out here. So we have abbreviation, abstraction, forfeit, and narcissism. Again, the answer will be narcissism. And I think someone said, I need to talk to you about these questions. So with that said, we have the definition of conceit being excessive pride in oneself or vanity. So if you didn't know that vanity is another way of saying conceit or conceited or being, being vain, then yeah, that's going to be it right there. Now in a sentence, we're going to see the sentence here saying, I fear Zane's conceit will be the cause of his fall. And there it is. So let me go ahead and gene in here real quick. Now, going from the bottom up, help me out, my party people. What does forfeit mean? What does forfeit mean? Let's make sure we understand these words here. What does forfeit mean? Right. To give up, to quit, to cancel your efforts, to surrender. To give up, that's right. That's right, that's right, that's right. So correct there. What does abstraction mean? Let's go to B here. What does abstraction mean? Something that is abstract can be confusing, yeah? All right, not quite, yeah, so abstraction is essentially basically the idea of dealing with ideas not dealing with anything concrete not dealing with anything real like you're well you are dealing with real things they could be real ideas obviously but it's the idea of thinking about ideas rather than things that's what abstraction is and so when we think about abstract things typically we think of confusing things because a lot of the times it's hard to wrap our heads around things that don't have a physical form and I can agree with that. I can absolutely agree with that. And so lastly here, let's talk about abbreviation. What does abbreviation mean, my party people? What does abbreviation mean? 
What does that mean? Yeah, abbreviation is actually the opposite of elaboration. It's actually the opposite, Margaret. And so abbreviation is to shorten something. So can we abbreviate this meeting? I have to go to lunch soon, right? You know, can we make this brief or abbreviate? Brief, brief being the root word of abbreviate. Even though there's a V, it should, you know, the F comes in when you just say brief. But yeah, brief is the root word there, which not a lot of people know. So with that, shorten, that is right. Oh, you're good, Kevin. You're good. So let's go and dive on into the next question here, my party people. Let's go to number four. Three, two, one. Let's go. Two, one time. Let's go. Throw them in there. Throw them in there. Throw them in there. Throw them in there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. There we go. There we go. Come on. This ain't a game show. This is your show. Come on. I think we're missing like four more people here. Come on. I'll wait. I will wait. Thank you. All right. Cool. So my kids are inexorable with the amount of TikTok they consume, and I'm taking them to the mountains for a break. All right. So my kids are blank with the amount of TikTok they consume, and I'm taking them to the mountains for a break. Oh, Devin, I saw your hand up. I'll go ahead and address that in a moment. I got you. Um, so yeah, my kids are blank with the amount of TikTok they consume. What does it sound like would fit in there? If you just even look at the answer choices, my kids are dishonorable with the amount of TikTok they consume. My kids are relentless with the amount of TikTok they consume. My kids are unfazed with the amount of TikTok they consume. My kids are resentful with the amount of TikTok they consume. Does anybody look like kids, or do, do kids look like they are resentful of TikTok if they're addicted to it? Nah, man, nah, nah. Uh, my kids are, and you, you may think of this and you may be like, okay, my kids are unfazed or my kids are relentless. Dishonorable doesn't really fit the bill here, right? And so I'll be honest with you, about 30 seconds ago was the first time I've seen this word in my life. So I looked at this and I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and Google this just in case. I think it's B, but let me go ahead and Google this. And yeah, the answer is B. The answer is B. And I'll be real with you guys. You guys know me. I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't see this word ever in my life. So Arshina, thank you for learning me some, some words. So, well, not grammar, but you get it. So my kids are inexorable with the amount of TikTok they consume, and I'm taking them to the mountains for a break. They won't stop. They're relentless. That fits the bill there. That fits the bill. And so the pure definition here, uh, the definition here of inexorable is going to be unstoppable or unavoidable. So everyone here should be inexorable with their studying. Am I right or am I right? I know I'm right. All right, cool. So yeah, it kind of sounds like Mr. Duran is a little conceitful, huh? Oh, okay, cool, whatever. So cuts and bruises were inexorable for me as a little child. And I think that's the same for everybody here, right? especially if you tried to ride a bike at once at one point, trying to uh, learn how to skateboard, you know, longboard, trying to do whatever it is you're trying to do. You're going to mess up. You're going to fall for sure. All right. When we look at the definitions of these other words here, let's check them out. Dishonorable, basically lacking faithfulness or lacking honesty. Dishonorable. Unfazed. Unfazed meaning unbothered meaning calm in the face of whatever distracting your distraction you're facing. Unfazed, I think we understand that pretty well, at least the majority of us here. Then D, resentful. What does resentful mean, everybody? And I said it earlier, what does resentful mean? Not similar. Nope, not similar. Animosity. I was waiting for somebody to say that. There we go animosity and resentment are very similar words so if you had a question cough cough if you had a question somewhere along the lines that said hey you know resent or resentfulness or resentment most nearly means blank blank animosity blank it's going to be animosity so there it is 
So Devin, I'll let you go ahead and ask your question here, boss. I'll answer it for you, and then we'll move forward. Go ahead, boss. Oh, yes. uh, thank you very much for today. Uh, sorry, kind of late for today. I wasn't checking out there. Are you fine? And I have a question for uh, number. I know like to be prior yourself and you know looking like I'm good or not. But uh, I have also a question. What is the difference between the narcissism and the selfish? I thought also selfish is not an option, but is it a different way for the question? So I got to cut you off right there, Devin. Uh, um, so it seems that your mic is uh, very choppy because uh, I know you're at the hotel right now getting ready to take the test. Um, but yeah, your, your mic is very, very... Uh, Three, but I was kind of... Yeah, so it was still going even like 10 seconds after I muted you. Um, Devin, go ahead and uh, type your question in the chat box if you could, um, because I can't hear you. It's, it cuts, it's cutting in and out. I think your question sounded like for this question, for narcissism, you thought that selfish was in there. Um, so someone who is a narcissist typically is someone who is selfish. Uh, they're very closely related. I will agree on that. I'm trying to think of a way that they're not exactly the same. No, but no, like being selfish is definitely a characteristic of someone who is a narcissist. Now, I'm not a thousand percent sure if those would be synonyms if presented. Arshina, any? I wouldn't say that they're synonyms, um, but I would say exactly what you said, that when being selfish is maybe like a symptom of having narcissism. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure there. But yeah, Devin, hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, selfish is not the same. Selfish is a quality of someone who is a narcissist, but it is not exactly the same thing as being a narcissist. So everybody, everybody else, does that make sense there? Cool. Sounds good. So with that said, let's go ahead and go back here and extrable. And three, two, one, let's go. Looking at our final three, two, and one. Cool. So who thinks that I should, uh, just to joke around real quick, who thinks that I should wear a suit and a tie like Jeopardy style, like a game show style for one of these days? All right, cool. Yeah, I'm thinking about having some fun with it. I got you. I'm always trying to think of ways to have fun with it. And, uh, and also Cody. <laughs> Um, so also a follow-up question, and this is a more serious question. Um, would you guys appreciate if I uh, turn those Monday sessions into two-hour classes? Cool. Yeah, and does Jeopardy sound too? <laughs> yeah, so I've been considering this for a while because I was debating between the, the following. It's like, you know, add another class throughout the week or make the Monday classes better because obviously that's one hour and you guys can obviously tell that we learn way more in two hours than we do in one. So I was always considering the Monday class as like a free sample class, but why not make the sample like the real deal? So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make the Monday classes two hours. Um, it won't be in July. I think I'm gonna start doing that in August, okay? I'm gonna start doing that in August um, because honestly, you guys have just been awesome and I don't really think that there's a reason why I shouldn't be doing more for you guys. So thank you all for, for really keeping up with everything. Um, it's easy for me to just make that choice. So with that, here we go. My anonymity, that's how you pronounce it, anonymity, not anonymity, no, anonymity. So my anonymity in this confession would be much appreciated. My anonymity, that's right, Margaret, anonymity. I <laughs> see you sounding it out. My anonymity. Uh, so anonymity most nearly means what? Fame, hostility benevolence, 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 or namelessness, or namelessness. So when you think of the word anonymity, what is the very, what, what is a very closely related word that you might be thinking of automatically in your head? Anonymous, 
That's right, anonymous. Right, my anonymousness in this confession would be much appreciated. When something or someone is anonymous, there's typically not a way to identify them. If there's not a way to identify them, we can say that that person or thing is nameless. And that's why D is the answer. That's why D is the answer. So the definition of anonymity is being of, un, being of unknown name or being of an unknown name. And so as a sentence here, let me go ahead and let Jan yell in. There we go. So as a sentence, it was published with anonymity, so we don't know who wrote it. So that person's weak. Okay. But here we go. Answer choices. Let's take a look here. A, fame. Fame. So everybody, when you compare fame and anonymity, what is the word that describes their relationship? I'll, the first person who gets it gets bonus points here. Fame versus anonymity. Those two words are what? I don't want to see the word opposite. Opposite is a synonym for this word. Wink, wink. What's the word I'm thinking? Antonym, Evan. Spot on. Yes. Fame and anonymity are antonyms. Yes. They are opposites of each other. Because fame means, yo, complete recognition, like a household name. Anonymity means you can't even identify them. Opposites there. Or, again, antonyms. So how about hostility here? Hostility. What would hostility mean to you? Right, we think of violence, right? Someone's being hostile, right? Someone can be uh, a threat. Someone can be an aggressor or aggressive. Great, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But here's the word of the day here. Benevolence. What does benevolence mean? Because I, because this is an example of a common word here for sure, because we may have word, uh, word, we may have heard in culture, you know, in everyday culture, we can say that, oh man, that was such a benevolent gesture, you know, to basically give your time for these people. That was so benevolent, right? We may have heard of malevolent and benevolent. Benevolent is the good one. Benevolent is the one that is kind, that is okay with donating their time and being courteous to other people, that generous, exactly, gentle, warm-hearted, exactly, exactly. And NJJ makes a great point here. Bene, B-E-N-E, -E, prefix meaning good or selfless. NJJ, I appreciate you. Thank you for that. So here we go. Moving on to number uh, six, three, two. One, before we start, who's five for five right now? Who's five for five right now? Typically, we have about maybe about like six or seven people there. Hey, it's okay if it's not you. It's all good. Remember, we're here to get better. We're not here to be perfect. We're here to get better. Better is the goal. So it looks like we have about five people so far. And yeah, so Danielle, look, even if we got none right so far, we've had the opportunity to try five questions out each question having five words. So we have picked up 25 words that we can use and add to our vocabulary so far. Again, keep looking forward. Progress every day. That's the key here. That's the key. So Evan, four for four, you were late to the party, so you didn't get to do the first one. So you're four for five, Evan. Sorry, bud. You're four for five. So <laughs> I'm messing with you. So here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Three, two, one, and time. Answers, answers, answers. Hey, hey, hope you're enjoying the session of recording so far. So as always, if you're looking for extra ASVAB help and support from a coach to kind of guide you through the process, study planning, and all the materials you need, just shoot me a text real quick. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, 567-698-8867. Go ahead and ask me about my all access program or just ask me about the program in general. I'll be more than happy to tell you about it so you know that you can stress less and raise your score with ease. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Let's ace the ASVAB. 
text me now and then let's keep going. So this is one of those questions where I'm like, I know what the answer is, but one of the answer choices I did not readily recognize. And I won't blame anybody here for not recognizing it. You probably know what word I'm talking about. Arshina, I hate you. So let's go ahead and check. <laughs> I'm messing with you. So, okay, cool. Cool. So let's go ahead and check this out. Most of the rules were of a circumspect and preventative nature. So most of the rules were of a blank and preventative nature. So everybody, when you think of the grouping of rules and preventative nature, what does that make you think of? When you think of rules and preventative nature, what does that make you think of? Redo says caution, Charles says caution, caution, school, <laughs> school. And so the answer here, yeah, cautious. And when you use the context clues here, we can absolutely come to that conclusion as well. We can take a look here and say, hey, look, most of the rules were of a blank and preventative nature. So when we think of rules preventing, what are rules meant to prevent? Well, violations of those rules, which usually violating rules leads to a boo-boo or someone getting hurt or someone being disadvantaged, right? It's to prevent harm to somebody else, whether physical, emotional, or mental. And so when we think of it that way, we can make a pretty good case here that even if we've never seen the word circumspect before, I believe we can agree that the sentence here sounds like they're trying to be cautious. Sounds like they're trying to be cautious. And so there it is. So first one answer, right? Hey, first time for everything. Let's go for the next one. So then be here. So candid. So when we think about candid, what does candid mean? Most of my people here who love taking selfies or taking pictures, I want the photo to be candid. Right, straightforward. So there's two ways to use candid. One is in appearance. And one is an approach. So when we think about candid, when we think about appearance, we think about naturally occurring. So take a candid picture or a natural picture where it looks like I'm doing something, even though I know there's a camera on me, fake. But then the other one, shout out to anybody. So the other one is in terms of a situation where you are speaking to somebody saying, hey, look, I need to be candid with you. I need to be straightforward with you. Uh, your performance this month at work sucked. You're fired. That's candid right there. Being straightforward and honest, um, more often than not, it comes with a negative connotation. More often than not. But there it is. So, concomitant. Concomitant. What does that mean, everybody? That's the first time I've seen that word. What does that word mean? I didn't know it either. Not going to lie. I didn't know it either. And I'm not going to play. I'm not going to play, y'all. So, here I have it here pulled up on Google. Uh, uh, Concomitant means naturally accompanying or associated. So naturally accompanying or associated. So or associated. So basically like saying, hey, uh, you know, kind of saying like, you know, some fried chicken and white rice. Those are uh, concomitant depending on where you're from in the world. If you're Caribbean, yeah, you know, some rice, beans and chicken, you know, that all accompanies together nicely. Shout out. I saw the smiles across the board there. What's up? And so then, uh, Consequent or consequent. What does consequent mean? <laughs> Curry, goat, peas, and rice. Right on. So what, this last one here, let's go ahead to this last one here. Consequent. What does that mean? What does that mean? Who knows? There we go. Consequence. Angela Salcedo, right on, right on, right on. The results, exactly, resulting from, consequent, right? That is the root word of consequence. So there it is. So definition of circumspect, again, will be here, wary and unwilling to take risks. So another word here, write this down if you didn't know, prudent. That's a nice little synonym you can add onto your list there. Prudent, cautious, an abundance of caution, prudent. Next, the sentence. Let's check it out here. 
So the witness seemed too circumspect of the police and was reluctant to help. So I think we've all seen that before, you know, depending on where you live. But if you've ever seen police interact with people in their neighborhoods, a lot of people were like, eh, didn't see anything. Didn't see anything, right? That may happen. And most times it's because they don't really want to get involved. That's fair. And that's fair. Yeah. Three, two, one, let's go. Two, one, and time. Go for it, gang. Ah, this one, this one might have been too easy. Come on, put your A, hey, put your answers in. I'm seeing that's a little slow now. Put your answers in, guys. Come on. Come on. Don't slow it down yet. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. We're still missing, I think, what is that? We got 73 people in here. We've got about not that many answers. Oh, I'll wait. I will wait. Come on. This, this one's a lot more manageable. I know this one's more manageable. Come on. Take a guess, Christopher. Take a guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. What does it sound like it could be? So reading the question here, Jess was looking at the hogs wallow in the mud. So, and again, with these sentence questions, read around the word if you need to. Jess was looking at the hogs blank in the mud. All right. So does it sound like the hogs might be having a tea party in the mud? Probably. They're probably getting really messy in there. They're probably just getting messy. That's, that's what it sounds like is happening, right? That's what sounds like is happening. They're not sitting there doing calculus. They're, they're, getting, they're getting messy. So when we think about these four words, I mean, I'm looking at three of them, and I'm like, uh, abjure, micturate, caper. I don't know what those mean. But I do know what slosh means. And there's your answer. The answer B slosh is correct. The answer B is correct. Slosh. So I was looking at the hogs slosh in the mud. That would make sense. And so slosh and wallow both nearly mean, you know, roll around, tumble around, right? Or typewriting, LOL. So here we go as a sentence. After our walk, the elephants wallowed in the river as we bathed them, as we bathed them, excuse me there. So there it is. So using our trusty old nice little Google here, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we can define each of these words. Again, I'm, I'm walking you through the strategies that I would apply if I didn't know these words. Like, let's be real about this. If we look at abjure, micturate, and caper, we can go ahead Use these things that work really well in the 21st century. You know, this machine that lets you get access to information known by everybody else. Yeah, go ahead and use it. So I want to just type in abjure. What's the definition of it? Cool. So abjure, solemnly renounce. So renounce. So basically do away with a certain belief or a certain conviction or, you know, basically removing yourself from that ideology. Boom. There is abjure. So next, micturate. We can do that too. Boom. Type it in. Micturate. This is exactly how you want to take care of things in the word knowledge. If there's a word that you find confusing, this is exactly what you want to do. So micturate, that basically means urinate. Okay, great. Didn't know that. So boom. Micturate means to go ahead and go number one. Sounds good. And then the last one here, define caper. Boom. Type it in. Caper to skip or dance about in a lively or playful way. So caper, so to caper around or to receive good news and then to caper about your day basically means to playfully skip and go jolly around. John, that is great. Yep, absolutely. So with that said, there it is. So one more time, let's go ahead and write it here. Again, this is exactly how I would go about it if I didn't know these words. So abjure, that would basically mean renounce. We have micturate, basically means urinate, and then caper, 
Jolly, Jolly. Skip. No, let me go ahead and make sure I got that right form of Jolly, actually. And the live. Okay, so basically, skip or dance in a playful way. We'll go ahead and go with that. Skip in a playful way. Skip in a playful way. And again, remember, guys, look, the goal here is to continuously and consistently add these words to your vocabulary. That's the goal here, because the more of these common words that you add to your vocabulary, and we can argue whether or not these are common words, we can argue that all day. But the fact of the matter is, if you can slowly add these words to your vocabulary, the chances of you succeeding on the ASVAB only goes up. Really, it only goes up. So being able to define the word, being able to give a synonym of the word, and being able to use the word in a sentence, all three of these things together are a great way to go about it. And so with that said, my party people, let's go ahead, go to the next, three, two, one, let's go. All right, I need everybody to go all in here. Three, two, one. If you're not done, I don't care. Take a guess, take a guess, take a guess. Let's go. Come on. Go, 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 go. Give it your best shot. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. That's all we can give, right? That's all we can give. That is all we can give. Our best shot here. All right, cool. Thank you, as always, guys, for the participation here. Perfect. That is great participation there. So let's go. So no one knew why the light would pulsate between the hours of 2.35 a.m. to 4.04 a.m. every Tuesday. No one knew why the light would pulsate between the hours of 2.35 a.m. to 4.04 a.m. every Tuesday. Pulsate most nearly means what? Multiply, throb, reflect, or overcome. So this is one of those situations where the definition of the correct answer may not make total sense if you were to throw it in, but it is the most closely related word. So again, remember that the name of the game here is most nearly means, most nearly means. And so you can have words that mean the same or similar way or similar sentiment, but in different contexts. And this is one of those words. So the word pulsate, basically means to go ahead and flow in and out or to, in this case, flicker. Has anyone here heard of the word flicker before? So no one knew why the light would flicker between the hours of 2.35 a.m. to 4.04 a.m. Does that sound like that would make sense there? No one knew why the light would flicker, right? That's an easy, that, that would make it too easy, right? That would make it way too easy. And so we, we, we decided to go and dial it up just a little bit here. But pulsate basically means to just continuously go from high to low, high to low on whatever that frequency really means, whether it's turning on and off, whether it's growing and contracting, whether it's you know going back and forth, whatever it may be. But pulsate pretty much means basically hit your peak and hit your valley, peak and valley, peak and valley. And so in this case, flicker comes to mind immediately. But another word that works perfectly well here, if you think about a different context, like let's say uh a very, very, very fresh bruise, throb. Because when we think about the word throb or a throbbing pain, everybody, can we safely say that when, we, when we're experiencing a throbbing pain, that pain is like shooting up, then down, shooting up, down, up, down, up, down. Like we really feel that pain going through. We feel it throb or pulsate. Exactly. We've seen the throbbing and pulsating headache. Exactly. Rhythm. Exactly. A pulse, right? Heartbeat. Great ways. Guys, you guys are doing awesome there. You're doing awesome there. Right on. And so let's look at the words that, well, let's actually look at the definition first, then we'll look at the other words. So the answer here is B, throb, the definition of pulsate to expand and contract regularly. I actually didn't look at the exact definition before this one, so I'm cool. 
or conceded, whatever we want to say it. So next, the ventilator continued to pulsate even after the patient had expired. Wow, some of these sentences are, Sheena. We have to go ahead and uh, we have to have a chat here. So the ventilator continued to pulsate even after the patient had expired. So there that is. All right, so with that, let's take a look at the others, <laughs> the other definitions here. <laughs> so we have multiply. Well, that just means grow. Next, reflect. Well, what's another way to say reflect, everybody? I'll give it to you. What's another way to say reflect? Mirror, look back on. I'm looking for one more here. Review, there we go. Yep. So to reflect, basically, yeah, you can review. You can basically shoot back. Um, you can also mirror. It really depends on what, this, what the context is for that. And then lastly, overcome. Overcome is to beat, you know, is to outlast. Um, another way is to win. You know, to overcome something is to win, right? To shine, yeah, or not shine, but um, yeah, to just clear a hurdle or an obstacle, yeah. Up next, here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Nine. <laughs> to win Call of Duty, you guys kill me. And time, let's go. Everybody here, everybody, let's go, let's go. So this is one of those questions where it's not just that two answers seem tricky, they all look tricky. They all look tricky. And so you can tell that, you know, Arshina went ahead and put on those red horns. She was like, mwah, ha, ha, when she made this question. I can bet you that she did. So. Look at her just sitting there looking malicious. All right, cool. So with that, their hard work paid off as results materialized. Okay, their hard work paid off as results materialized. Materialized most nearly means what? So let's think about it. When something materializes, let's go ahead and ask ourselves what the hell that root word is. Everybody, what's the root word of materialized? What is the root word of materialized? Felicia, spot on. Material, 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 material. So for something to materialize, well, that basically means the material became. Like it became, like to come to fruition. That's a great way to say it as well. Something actually happened. So when we think about the words here that we have for definitions, we have transpire, perspire, inspire, and sire. So these all sound the same, but they are all very, very, very different words. The answer is going to be A, but let's go ahead and go through each of these words before we go to the next page here. So I'll just, I'll just do it on the next page. That way we can all look at it at the same time. But sire is basically a person or typically a person of authority in the olden days. But sire, why should we do this? You know, basically you're identifying or speaking to someone higher in command. So we can just say person for now. Inspire. What would you guys say is a uh, close uh, close word related to inspire? Yeah, motivate. Yeah, influence, encourage. Yep, for sure. Now, perspire. What does perspire mean? What does perspire mean? Hint, hint. Your deodorant helps with perspiration. Yeah, it's a sweat. That's right. Perspire essentially means sweat. And then transpire means to take place. So 
So, so for something to take place, for, for something to transpire, something transpired here, something took place, something materialized, something happened, like the results finally took place, the results finally happened. And that's why A is the answer. The definition of materialize, become actual fact to take place. And so you see here, take place, take place, the exact same. And so before you know it, so as a sentence here, obviously my big old head's in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of die off to the side a little bit. All right, here we go. So before you know it, all this money and fame will materialize and you will forget about us. Cool. There it is. So hopefully, mob can't see the period. David, I'm going to kick you in the chest. So there it is. <laughs> that was good, though. That was good. So there it is. Before you know it, all this money and fame will materialize and you will forget about us. Is that good enough for you, David? Because I'm breaking my neck here. All right, cool. So hey, hey, I hope you enjoyed the first half of this recording. And if you want to watch the full recording, the full version of this and every single class I've ever done, then go ahead and consider joining my ASVAB All Access program. It gives you access to 24 hours of classes per month and every single recording I've ever done. And on top of that, you get to text me whenever you need help and get thousands of extra practice problems to work on whenever you want, 24 seven with video solutions to the math questions. That way you can keep growing, get the score you want and that job you deserve. I'm Coach Anderson. I have a master's degree in teaching, been doing this for over 10 years, and it's my passion to help people succeed just like you. So let's go ahead and lower the test anxiety. Let's go ahead and get rid of the blanking out feeling, all of that and really replace it with true confidence that we can take into test day and get the results that we want. So again, get the ASVAB All Access program or shoot me a text if you have any questions about it, but there is a video on the page with the link. So watch that video to see how it works, or again, shoot me a text right over there. There's my number. That way you can learn more about it and truly understand that this is about helping you succeed and our community here to help you enlist. So again, sign up now, get started, and get the score you want. Let's get to it.